Hey friends. So for today's video, I am giving you the long awaited how I prep or how I'm trying to prep for the October art challenge I have decided to do, which just so happens to be Drawtober. Now, if you haven't decided what art challenge you want to do for October and you want to do one, I have a video about 13 of them. I'm gonna link it down below as well as above. So you can go over and check it out after this video. Now, what I wanted to go over first is, this is my first time doing an art challenge so by no means do I know if this prepping is going to make me successful. I have no way of knowing. I am dealing with some health issues, which I have mentioned in other videos. So I don't know exactly how my October is going to go, but I'm hoping to still finish this challenge because if you don't know, Drawtober is a prompt, I believe every five or six days. So you have five or six days to do one prompt. There's six prompts for all of October. The theme this year is the season of the witch. I actually have the prompt list up right behind me, but I'll also link it down below so you guys can check it out. I also plan on doing some prompts from some other challenges because I do have quite a few that I like, but I just can't see myself doing the whole challenge for the month of October, at least for this year, because I do work full time. And as I said, I don't know how my October is going to go. So first thing I wanted to talk about is coming up with ideas with prompts. So sometimes we have difficulty kind of bringing words to visualizations. I know I do. When I look at a prompt list initially, like I have a couple ideas that pop into my head, but nothing that usually means a full blown picture. Of course there are exceptions, but I figured I'd go through a couple of the ideas I had for each of these prompts. Feel free to do your own spin on it. It's just what I thought of it. Another thing I would suggest is, you know, looking up synonyms, looking up the words that make up the prompt. I went on Pinterest and looked up witchy aesthetics because that kind of got me in the mood, but those are just some suggestions especially if you don't know what the word means. So if you don't know what the word means exactly, or if you, for example, I didn't know one of the prompts is about a bog. I have no idea what a bog looks like. I have a general idea, but what's the difference between a bog and a swamp? Maybe you might want to know that. So you can look these words up, look at synonyms, you know, it helps. It also helps to kind of know witchy lore. So, I mean, the basics are when you think of witches, you think of potions, you think of flowers, potion ingredients. I'm trying to think what else I think, like witches have at familiars such as cats and ravens, things of that nature. Of course, you don't have to go that route. You can always spin it whatever way you want. But I'm gonna go through what I thought of for a few of these prompts and let you know. So for the Bewitched Bog, which is the prompt for the 21st through the 25th, a couple of ideas I wrote down. And just so you guys know, this is just a journal I bought from Marshalls for like seven bucks. It was in the clearance section. You can easily find something like this for cheap. You can even go to Walmart, I think, or the dollar store. They have spiral bound notebooks for $1. Composition notebooks are cheap. So I write down my art ideas in here. It's not specific to this challenge. I do use it to brainstorm YouTube video ideas as well. So just a good idea to have. So some of the words I came up with were witch looking up at a full moon, thinking maybe she's, you know, her back is to us. Maybe she's naked, I don't know. I don't know if you necessarily wanna be naked in a bog, but she's a witch, so maybe she does things like that. Witch hat, I was thinking her familiars with her I'm in the water. I want the moon, I think the moon to be like kind of the focal point. I want a lot of detail on it. And then I want kind of less detail on the witch perhaps. And then another thing I just thought of is I would love to have some sort of sparkles or lights or maybe candles or like floating candles or fireflies, just some ideas I'm coming up with in my head. So another one I have, I'll do one more prompt. For the first prompt, which is Garden of Magic, and this is running from the 1st to the 5th of October. I was kind of thinking I want a cottage core witch um, with a basket and a bandana. Maybe she's gathering some things from her garden. And this is very basic. I didn't take it further outside the box but sometimes if you write down just like the basics like what first comes to mind you find yourself kind of going outside that box so at some point i ended up with she has a cauldron instead of plants there's witch ingredients growing out of the ground i don't know if i'm necessarily going to use that but those are some ideas i thought of like mummy hands things like that so you can do a lot with this and you can also switch it up as i said i was originally going for a cottage core vibes i don't know if i'm going to go back for that but i might i was even thinking Wiccan instead of witch, but you know, that's up to you guys. 
So the last prompt is Candlelight Coven. And I came up with, immediately I think of obviously, um, you know, candles. I'm thinking floating candles, because I always go back to that. I love the idea of floating candles. I was thinking of bringing back, because I was thinking of using the same witch throughout the whole thing. So I was thinking of bringing back, you know, the witch, as well as um, she has an apprentice in another prompt. So I was thinking of bringing her back. I don't know where I'm gonna get my other, like, you know, witches, because a coven is a group of witches. Usually related to each other, I believe. So I am gonna do some more research on that, but this is kind of how I'm preparing it. And I just wrote down all these words. I mean, you don't have to write full complete sentences, just short descriptive phrases, or even as I said, just a word, you know, try to picture what you're tr you want to do, put it into words, because the more descriptors you have, you have more than a prompt now, you have description, you have adjectives, you kind of are making an image the way a writer would, except you're not really, don't worry about grammar or even spelling if you don't want to. It's just a great way to do it. And that's why I said also use a thesaurus, find synonyms, find antonyms, try to bring maybe some of your your own aesthetic into it? Do you like more pastel things? You don't have to do the traditional witch. I'm just leaning that way because I love witchy things. I've always wanted to draw a witch. So that's where I'm kind of leaning, but you can do whatever you want. So that's, that's where I start with turning a prompt into an image. You have a prompt, you have the first couple words that come into your head, you jot them down, and then you start kind of expanding from there until you have more and more words and you're kind of happy with the image that you are forming in your head as well as describing down on paper. So the next thing I wanna do is create thumbnails. Thumbnails are great because then you're taking these words and the image you kind of formed in your head and you put these words on the paper and you're actually putting an image on paper. I'm gonna do it digitally just because I prefer to thumbnail digitally. My finalized ones I might actually do in my sketchbook just because I think it's just better that way. I haven't decided what medium I'm gonna do with these yet. I might do a mix of mediums, but it's okay to go out of your comfort zone. I'm thinking I might even do some ink, which I haven't done ink in a while, so I'm really nervous about that. But we're not at that stage yet. So what we're gonna do is do some thumbnails and then I'm gonna come back to you on on the screen. I'm gonna record some thumbnails, insert them here, and you can see what I came up with for one or two of the prompts. So I'm very sorry about how I recorded this. You might wanna be in full screen mode, but we are starting with one idea for the Garden of Magic, which I believe is the first prompt of the Drawtober prompt list. And basically I'm doing what I told you that I my keywords that I had. So I was thinking about garden, you know, I have the tree there. I'm drawing some sunflowers on the left-hand side there. Obviously this is very, very rough. This is not how sunflowers are supposed to look. It's not how a tree is supposed to look. I'm not using um, any reference photos and I'm just kind of playing with it because I'm trying to figure out what exactly I want to do, but I don't want to waste too much time on details and things like that. Just trying to get the main things in very roughly to know kind of where I want things to go, what I want to do with this particular prompt. There I'm drawing the cauldron. I did, I don't know if you guys can notice, I did make the background a bit more gray than white just to be a bit more easy on my eyes. I also decided to do orange. I do go for a darker orange with, a, with the next couple thumbnails, which should be helpful for you guys to see. But I have the witch with the cauldron. I have the cat familiar in the tree. I kind of decided I want the cat to be in all my drawings for this prompt list just because I think it would be kind of cool. I'm doing some mountains in the background, just very roughly sketching this all in. And I kind of like this idea. It was the initial idea I had when I was thinking of this prompt list. But then I decided this wasn't what I maybe want to do. So instead I had a picture of something a bit more simple. And you can actually see here too. I'm sorry about that. Um, we are going back into the old thumbnail. And I'm just doing some pumpkins because I wanted some pumpkins in the foreground. But I will go back to the other thumbnail. And I just had this idea of like 
the witch bringing a dying uh, plant back to life. So I wanted to do like a mini comic, but keep it very simple. So like, I don't want any background on this thing. Color maybe, I don't know. I think I might stick to the black and white. I didn't do any details of her dress, her face. I decided I made her too big because I wanted the hat to fit in. Obviously, I also wanted the cat, so I will resize her. There we go, in a sec. So then I started doing her hat, and I didn't want it to be like a traditional, you know, pointy, straight hat. I really wanted it to be kind of old, kind of worn. You'll see I'll add a patch there. And this is just like kind of making myself visual notes, I guess. Because as I said, I don't want to put too many details in, but certain details that are important to me, I'm going to put in. And that's why I did give this witch, you'll see a little expression because I want her to be kind of sad that this plant is dying. So she's reviving it. It's gonna be like a three picture series. So the first one is her starting to revive the dead plant. And there's that little patch I was talking about. Here's the cat coming. I know these are terrible drawings, but again, we wanna keep these as minimal as possible. Only the important things should show up. And here we are, I wanted to do like a close up as the second panel of this little mini comic where we have, oh, I'm taking it off because I put it on the wrong layer. Please tell me I'm not the only one who does this. I do this all the time. So here I am drawing it again on the layer I wanted it on. And obviously the, the plant looks, it's not weeping as much. And then I wanted it to suddenly just become this huge pumpkin, like enough that it shocked her. There's her hat had fallen off. And I think I, I made, I wanted to make the pumpkin alive. So you'll see, I, I give it an expression. And I wanted the cat to kind of be like, oh my God, like shocked. Obviously when I actually do the drawing, if this is the way I go, the cat won't be off the screen. There will be more border around this. Like there'll be more in the center, like the rest of the other drawings. And there we go, some thumbnails for the first prompt. So you just watched my thumbnail process. I came up with a few for each prompt because you wanna kinda play around with it. Now I think once you have a thumbnail, you kinda wanna think about medium. You know, do you wanna do traditional or digital? And you could go either way. Personally, I wanna do something a little challenging, so I might go out of the digital realm just to do something a bit challenging for me because I find traditional art a little bit more challenging if it goes beyond a sketch. But who knows, I might just stick with digital. I haven't decided myself yet and sometimes you need to kind of finalize the thumbnails to figure out what you want to do so sometimes you want to skip this step and just go straight to I would say thinking about color and what colors you want to do maybe do some color comps because sometimes that will decide for you how you want to go about this I personally don't see myself doing watercolor I just don't feel confident enough in that yet I am leaning towards ink specifically fine liners things like that but definitely do some color comps I'm already just Decided I want to do I think black and white but who knows I mean obviously you can do different mediums you can do different color schemes I just think I kind of want to go to the traditional route but we'll see I don't know yet sometimes you don't know even until you're actually starting the piece once you kind of come up with mediums and colors then you want to actually start thinking about okay when am I gonna sit down and do this and that's really I think key in making sure you finish the challenge obviously if you don't it's not the end of the world uh, no one's, I should hope no one's going to punish you for not finishing a challenge. Sometimes life gets in the way and that's the, that's the way it is. But you have to think about this because you already have all the things in place. You already know what you're going to draw, how you're going to draw it, in what medium. And I mean, maybe not in what medium, but maybe a general idea of, okay, I'm going to do tra traditional or digital and then go from there. You know, your color scheme. So the only thing left is actually sitting down and doing it. You can start with some rough sketches 
sketches. I definitely plan on doing a couple rough sketches before I finalize a sketch. I'm not showing that here because for me, that's part of the process of actually making the piece and not prepping for it. The thumbnail sketches to me are different. I'm talking about like a sketch that could eventually be a finalized piece. That's the next step. You have to think about when you're gonna sit down and do this. Look at your calendar, approximate how long it's gonna take you, figure out if it's okay, if it's gonna take me a couple days. If I'm using traditional media, how can I space this out over time without ruining the chances of the media working in my favor? How can I make sure I'm allotting enough time? So you always wanna estimate about how long it's gonna take you and then I would say add to it and that should be how long you expect to do this thing. Again, if you do decide to do Drawtober or any of the challenges that I mentioned, please let me know down in the comments because I would love to see your work. Send me a message over on Instagram. It's Creatively Chrissy and that is also linked down below. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up because it lets me know that you guys enjoy this kind of content. Also, consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. I post videos every Wednesday and Saturday. I don't know when this video is going up. I'm hoping it's going up Wednesday of this week. Today is September 25th that I'm recording this. So where I am in Florida, we are expecting a hurricane. So I don't know if Saturday's video is going to be a thing and I'm, I'm hoping Wednesday's is, but this is abnormal. So I just wanted to let you guys know that if I'm not around that's why if you are also in an area that's going to be impacted by storms please get safe please do what you have to do to take care of yourself and your loved ones i hope you have a great rest of your week i will see you wednesday have a great day guys